So, Persona 5 Tactica is kinda addicting. Like, I genuinely can't put it down and I legit wasn't expecting this, guys. Even as someone who has a soft spot for SRPGs. From the Fire Emblems, to the Valkyria Chronicles, to even the tactical style of games like Dragon Age. Sure, I do feel like I was in the minority of fans who were still looking forward to Tactica, but I didn't expect it to hook me this much. I've been playing since early Friday since review codes for individual creators didn't go out until after official release and I didn't want to make this first impressions kind of video until after I finished the first arc. Now I do want to thank Atlas for the code, though to be clear this video was completely my own thoughts on the game. And I can honestly say I've been really loving Tactica so far. And by the way, this is spoiler free when it comes to story, though I do talk about the gameplay in some more depth, I guess, just a heads up. Anyway, I just wanted to give three major reasons in this video as to why this game has been so enjoyable so far. Starting with what I love about every other Atlas game I've played, but especially the Persona series, and that's the sick UI we've all come to expect at this point. It's clear to me there was a ton of love and effort put into Tactica, and it really just oozes style in every artistic aspect. Soundtrack is another Atlas certified banger, and speaking of style, the art direction really doesn't bother me. Like, apparently the art team found it difficult to depict the actions and animations they were shooting for in Tactica with the Q Games art style, so the team adjusted the proportions and ultimately ended up placing more emphasis on the hands and feet. And so, seeing what the whole first arc and new character arena is about, I've honestly really come to love this style symbolically. Like, if they were going for the chibi-like look anyway, I find the longer lines and less emphasis on roundness fitting for the revolution and war thematic they got going on. But, you know, in general, I've always liked how willing P Studio is in particular when it comes to trying out new things for spinoffs. But moving on to the second thing I really love about Persona 5 Tactica so far, and that's the new duo of characters. Irina and Toshiro made a great first impression in their own ways, and a big part of that is thanks to their voice actors, actually. Irina is so confident, capable, and passionate, overall just super endearing, and it's cool seeing her kinda indirectly encourage Toshi to reclaim some of his own self-confidence. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more of their respective personalities in the story, though speaking of story, I can't say I found the first arc all that novel when it comes to narrative, especially since we've seen something similar covered in base Persona 5 already. Like I don't think it's bad or anything, but it is more so the desire to learn about the new characters that's keeping me interested in Tactica's main narrative and not necessarily anything specific to the plot itself so far. But okay, now onto the biggest thing that I've loved about Tactica and dude, the gameplay loop is freaking addicting. So I didn't pay close attention to the details in the marketing and trailers leading up to P5T's release, like those little specials from Mona for instance, so I truly was surprised when I actually got my hands on this game. I just wasn't expecting it to pay such respects to the turn-based system we've come to know and love in the mainline Persona games. And in particular, the way they've transferred over the one more and the all-out attack mechanics to the strategy genre is just perfect in my view. Super satisfying. So just in general, when it comes to Tactica, I was expecting something more along the lines of Fire Emblem, where there's a weapon hierarchy? Is that the right term? I don't know if it is, but you guys get me right. The whole weapons triangle thing in the series. So for Tactica, I was thinking there would be some sort of elemental weakness and resistance system for the personas and all, but wow, what a shocker that the gameplay is actually closer to a Valkyria Chronicle style, which is a series I have such a soft spot for. 
please play VC1 and 4, by the way. Uh, but yeah, the fact that enemies are normally in cover, which then requires us to get them out of that state to actually start inflicting major damage is such a refreshing callback. Another thing is also the sheer freedom of movement. Sure, the actual tactics themselves still boil down to a grid or chessboard system, but actually moving the characters feels like a Valkyria Chronicles game. Now, something else I really love is how you can position characters before you actually take their action, meaning you can pull off some interesting triple threats and even set up a string of one mores for different members of the party. And speaking of that, I like how every party member is essentially their own class or job, as well as how the elements have different effects, like just some examples are how Bufu and Zeo skills prevent enemies from moving, the fray and psychic skills have a grouping function, and Garu blows enemies away. So really quick, I want to speak to the other SRPG fans out there. As of the first arc, I can't say there were any maps where I felt the need to play defensively. I am playing on normal and I'm wondering if higher difficulties changes that, or if it becomes a thing as the game progresses, but so far I haven't had to use elements like Bufu and Garu in a defensive way to prevent movement during enemy turns. But surely there must be some future map that's just an onslaught wave of enemies for a set number of turns, right? Like, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that. But anyway, speaking of the different classes, it's cool how leveling up is a team-wide thing instead of something that has to be done individually for each unit. So again, surprisingly less of a Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy style and more Valkyria Chronicles-esque where level ups are just tied to ranking up overall classes. I really like this for Tactica since I think it's great incentive for players to try out and experiment with everything that's been put into this game's system. As in, it's super forgiving, especially for players who are new to SRPGs since experience is usually limited in these kinds of games, and Tactica basically makes sure you don't have to worry about something like accidentally giving experience to the wrong units. The skill tree ties into this since you can unequip stuff at any time, which refunds the points that you can then try on something else. Now, there's one thing I'm actually not a huge fan of personally, and that's how you can just equip any sub-persona you wish to any of the party members you want. I feel like it takes away from the uniqueness of each character's individual kit, since you could, say, equip an ice persona on Haru, and then never have to use Yusuke. Like, I get this is an option that respects the player's time and overall is just a way to provide more options, but I personally am just not a big fan of the sub-persona thing. Though to be fair, I also only just finished the first arc, so who knows what I'll think about it in the long run. But anyway, do you guys think certain strategies are too exploitable in this game? I'm of the mind that technically every game can be boiled down to that somewhat, but overall I just want to know what you guys think of Tactica so far. Are you surprised? How do you like the characters, the gameplay, the story, the style? Let me know your impressions in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe. It truly helps with the algorithm, and I really want to thank all my patrons and channel members for all their support that just lets me do what I do. Especially my special Fusion supporters, Big Klingy, Sam Bezjack, Francisco Santoyo Rego, M. Platinum Rose, Malcolm Lowry, Unholy Biscuit, Peter Shepard, and Andy.